Okay, students, good afternoon. Nice meeting you again on the material of listening comprehension. On the topic of listening comprehension today, we are going to talk about chunks and chunking. Before I start to the topic, let me go over to the first about the purpose of our study. There are some purposes to our study today. The first is students are able to identify the definition between chunks and chunking. Secondly, students are able to comprehend kinds of chunks in English. Students are able to listen to the native speaker speaking and conversation with chunks. And students are able to write and imitate some kinds of chunks in English used by native speaker in that speaker. Firstly, we come to the definition of chunk and chunking. What is chunk? Chunks are a group of words or a sequence of words which used by native speakers in delivering their idea as a natural and better way. This means that the brain stops more sequences of words than inaccessible words. Because of chunks, we can speak and write fluently. Understanding more chunks will also make your listening and reading easier as well. How about chunking? Chunking is learning vocabulary in a context. It means learning phrases or groups of words are there than single words. So, the differences between chunks and chunking, chunks are mostly in a sequence of words. But chunking is on the way of how to learn or the process of learning a language by lexical chunks rather than word by word. Back to the chunks learn. What are the kinds of chunks in language learning? Actually, there are six kinds of chunks, but we are going to focus on only on three of chunks, three kinds of chunks. There are institutional expression, idioms, and collocation. How to notice chunks? Reading is the effective way to notice chunks of language. Then, by this reading, also helps the learners to enhance their skill in noticing. Now we will know the example of kinds of terms in a language. One, as institutional expression. Institutional expression is the units of a sentence line, functioning as a separate occurrences. They are invariable, their parts cannot be separated, they include proverbs, aphorisms and other quotable utterances. I give you the example for the institutionalized expression like how do you do, have a nice day, give a break, long time to see. You can call some of the people some of the time. Sorry to interrupt, but can I just say blah blah blah. Idioms. Idioms are words or phrases that aren't meant to be taken literally. For example, if you say someone has cold feet, it doesn't mean that shoes are actually cold. Rather, it means they are nervous about something. For example, uh, we are going to know about some idioms examples in American everyday language. I just give you three examples. The first, she is going to call it at night. Call it at night. It means she is going to bed. Secondly, she lets things get out of her hand. Get out of her hand means she lets things get out of her control. The third example, she seriously robbed me the wrong way. Robbed me the wrong way means I didn't like her at all. Okay. This is the example of the second chunk. And then the third chunk is about collocation. 
Allocation refers to a group of two or more words that usually go together. I give you the example of the location by using make and do. A location with, with make, for example. Make a cup of tea. Make a cup of coffee. Make a noise. Make the bed. Make a dismiss guilt. Make a fuse. Make sense. And make time for someone. A location with do. For example, do the laundry. Do the errands. Do business with someone. Do a call. Do the shopping. Why are collocation important? There is an entire world of collocation to explore. Learning collocation is important because you begin to learn words in a larger group or a tongues of a language. Putting together these tongues of a language leads to more fluent English. Okay, student. This is for my explanation, and now it's time for you to practice. Let me go over deliver about kinds of Philip, and then you are going to analyze and also try to make a note about the tongues that you find on the film. On this film, you have to find about the three kinds of tongue that I explained before. Yeah? on institutionalized expression, secondly it's about idioms, and then the third is about collocation. Okay, what are the examples of all of it? Just try to find two for each. Write down on the comment of the video, and this is about the assignment. name pronounced LePage? It's LePage, actually. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Now, is it Ms. LePage or Mrs. LePage? It's Ms. But you can call me by my first name. Do you mind if I call you Ms. LePage? I love the way it sounds. <laughs> that's fine. I'm keeping you from your work, aren't I? I'm sorry. I'd love to talk, but I really have to get this done right away. I understand. You're not from here, are you? Excuse me? Your accent. You come from France, don't you? Yes. Paris, actually. That's nice. It sure is a beautiful day, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Can I have that information? I'm not quite done. What's taking so long? <laughs> Mrs. Beatty, I can take you to Mr. Evans' office. He'll be here shortly. Why, thank you. Beautiful day, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Novak's tickets ready. She may be stopping by this afternoon. Paul, are you okay? No, I feel awful. What's wrong? I've got this horrible cold. I'm sneezing. My back is killing me. I've got this pain at my hip. My neck's been bothering me all day. And I have a stomach ache. You may have to go see a doctor. No, I hate doctors. I wonder what could be wrong. Maybe he's allergic to work. <laughs> I'm not kidding here. I'm in pain. I used to want to be a doctor, you know. Say, ah. <laughs> now I remember why I didn't become a doctor. Paul, you really must get some medical help. A little acupuncture might help you feel better. Stay away from me. Dr. Anderson is meeting Mr. Evans downstairs in the cafe. 
Should we ask her to come up? She may be able to help. Great idea. I'll go get her. You might prefer an herbal remedy? <laughs> How long have you been feeling this way? Oh, I got the cold last night, and the pain in my back started this morning. Why? Another wonderful dinner, Cheryl. Thank you. You're welcome. I really enjoy cooking, actually. When I was young, I thought I was going to be a chef. You could be a chef. These cookies are fantastic. Why didn't you become a chef? My mother talked me out of it. She thought I would always have to work at night. She was afraid I would never meet a man and get married. She was probably right. If you were a chef, you wouldn't have met Bob. How do you know? Before he met you, Bob only ate fast food. <laughs> it's true. Your mother must have been very happy when you and Bob got engaged. She was. Hey, you'll never guess what Bob was going to be. Cheryl. A rock musician. A uh, basketball player? No. Bob was going to be a dancer. He was actually in the state ballet when he was young. No kidding. You never told me this. I could have been a great dancer. What made you change your mind? The diet was too hard. I had to stop eating everything. Chocolate cake, fried chicken, potato chips. I tried. I might have been able to do it. But then they said, no more bread and butter. <laughs> bread and butter, can you believe it? And that was the end. Wow, Bob, I never knew. Do you enjoy watching ballet at all? I can't. I'd like to. But as soon as the music starts, I get very, very... hungry. I didn't know that planning a wedding would be so hard. Oh. Marie, could you give us your opinion on a few things? I'd love to. First, how many people should we invite? Bob wants a small wedding. Uh, Twenty guests would be nice. I want a large wedding. About 300 people. 300? <laughs> Yesterday you said 200. I have a lot of relatives who want to come. Then there's the location. I always thought I'd get married in a park or at the beach. That's so romantic. I would like to get married indoors, where I won't get wet if it's raining. That makes sense. I prefer traditional music in the ceremony. Contemporary music. <laughs> I'd like a long ceremony and a short reception. I want a short ceremony and a huge celebration afterwards. I want a white cake. And I want... A chocolate cake. I know. How are we ever going to agree on this? Couple of rodents looking for a theme park. Will you call it a rodent, sister? I'm a bunny, and, and I'm a scooper. Ta -da! Ta -da! I thought I smelled a rat. Man. Speak of the devil. Make my little flower, my little bird, my little nut. My father taught me many things. He taught me in this room. He 
taught me, keep your friends close, but your enemies... What did you do? Nothing, I stirred the tanks. Whoa! Uh, this is Houston, uh, say again, please? Houston, we have a problem. Houston, we got a problem. Can't live with him, can't live without him. Catch you later. You're unbearably naive. Well, I was born yesterday. Thank you. Thank you.